Yo, yo, YouTube. This is my video for Monday the 4th of November. And it's gonna be another day in the life um, as I'm doing it. It's now quarter to seven in the morning. I'm picking up from Peterborough and I've got to drive 27 miles to the pickup. It's a 45 minutes drive away. I've got to be there for half past seven. Let's pick up. And I'm taking a long wheelbase van load to Birmingham, which is 86 loaded miles. And for this job, off the CX, I bid on this last Friday and I got it for £105.105 which is a bit cheap for a long wheelbase van job, it's about £1.10 a mile but considering the situation we're in at the moment with the prices being quite depressed I'm, I'm happy with that as a start I like doing a longish job for the first thing in a day this gets me out of bed early, getting up half past seven and so I've got a reasonably good chance today of getting a good paying day. That's how I see it. The other, reason, the other thing I wanted to note at this point is it's Monday morning and I'm looking forward to doing this job. In what world do you get to look forward to going to work at quarter seven on a Monday morning? Now very few of us are lucky to have that. And I've been fortunate enough to experience other jobs in my life and I know what it's like to have to get out of bed to go to a job you don't really love so I would pay a lot of money to have that um, for the rest of my life and not have the drudgery of a job that I don't like or I feel is let me down put me down and a quick note on that is I get a reminder almost every day about how lucky I am because when I go to a security guard or a warehouse operative or a forklift driver some of them not all of them but probably at least half you just know hate their jobs um, so it just put into perspective how lucky I am to have found this job um, and I think that if you've been doing this job for 20, 30 years, maybe you don't really appreciate. Because I'm guessing that doing this job for 20 or 30 years, you don't really appreciate how good it is because of two reasons. One, you might not have done anything else and therefore anything else to compare it to. But mainly two, like all jobs, like all careers, it will have changed immensely over that time. So what one remembers it being like in you know, even five years ago would be different, different, different to what it's like now. If you've been doing this sort of job for 20, 30 years, the number of changes you would have to have gone through would have been immense, and you would have remembered it being better in the past than it is now. So I can understand people being down on this job we've done it for a long time, but sometimes you've got to just look at the world less cynically and just say, what, you, what have I got? And it could be worse. Um, so for me, that's how, I look, that's how I look at the world, and I'm just so happy to have an easy job that at least has the potential to make me a living. It is tough in some ways, um, you know, believe me, it is tough um, to make money, but everything else about this job is just amazing. Right, I'll leave it there, and I'll speak to you probably when I picked up. Right, I've loaded up my stuff from Peterborough. I'm on my way now to Birmingham. Um, I arrived at 7.25, just five minutes before the pickup point. Um, it was quite nice because when I arrived, the shutter was already open and there was people around sort of doing work. And uh, we got loaded up with some um, window frames, quite a few of them in the end. It was 36 window frames. And by the time we were loaded and I was off site, it was 7.50. And my journey to Birmingham, according to Google Maps, is two hours and 
10 minutes, which puts my ETA as being 10 o'clock. And that's assuming nothing goes wrong between here and there. It's like traffic. Traffic really is anything could go wrong, I suppose. The traffic could easily change in that time. So I put, I think, a realistic ETA of quarter past 10 in the CX notes. And the only reason I mention all that is because this particular booking says it needs to be delivered by 9.55, which is actually an impossibility, bearing in mind how that took to load. It took a good 20 minutes, 25 minutes to load up everything and get it securely put in place. So although I have arrived on time, by the um, CX metrics, I'm going to arrive and my drop off slightly late. Now I doubt it makes a difference. I doubt if at the other end they're going to be waiting for me for those 10, 15, 20 minutes and, and so I'm getting up frustrated. I'm sure it's going to be fine, but it's just an indication to me about the unrealistic time scales that we put on this this job. And it doesn't often happen, but this is a shipper that I've had dealings with recently that I've not been happy with. So it just gives me another indication that this particular shipper doesn't really know what it's like to be a driver. Oh, there's something going on here. I'll just get past this bit before I keep going talking. There's a crash. Oh, I think there's a little crash. There's an ambulance there. Oh, they're okay. Right. Um, so it's just another indication that this particular shipper. Um, Probably I, I need to probably, if I can help it, probably avoid them. But like I said previously, I'm not in a situation where I can be too choosy about the people I work for. So I can't really start blocking people or ignoring, ignoring work. But I'm just going to be more mindful about the shippers that I can trust, as it were, and those that I'm going to be a bit more wary of. And as I've done this job for longer, you do get a sense for the names that keep coming up that you kind of think, oh, they, they don't pay very well or they don't have very good information on their uh, booking or they might not be very able to, easy to contact or, in this case, they might have unrealistic expectations about how long it takes to do a job. So, I'm on my way. My ETA at the moment is 10 o'clock. So, I'm sure it'll be absolutely fine, but it just adds a little bit of frisson of anxiety that I might be ending up getting being late through no fault of my own. <laughs> it's more a reflection of my character, I think, than it is the, uh, the job, but it's just something that's a real, it's, it's what I'm thinking at the moment. I'm generally thinking right now, do I need to rush? My other, my other thing is, no, you can't rush. You've got some equipment in the back there that needs to be handled really carefully, and there's no way I'm going to risk damaging that stuff in the back. So I'm just going to take it steady. I'm just going to drive carefully, take the corners carefully, and not rush this job because it's just not worth risking damaging the person's goods that I'm carrying. Hello, so I've just offloaded the first load in Birmingham and it was quite easy in the end. There was a, a brush park right next to the unit that they were storing the items in. They helped me put them in the unit. I got them off the van, they put them in the unit and I arrived at about 9.55 in the end, so time-wise it was very good. And then I was off-site to finish by 10 past, I'm sorry, by 5 past 10. And I've just bit got my next job. I had a call at 10.26. Uh, I put about six bids on various jobs coming out around Birmingham. And the one that I got was one I'm happy to do. It's a small van job. It's only six miles away from where I was, 17 minutes drive. It's going from Cradley Heath to Warrington. And I do like going to the northwest. It always, always has been for me a, a pretty good place to end up or be in the middle of the day. So we'll see how it goes today. And um, my job is 83 loaded miles. I've bid £65.65. So in total I'm on £170 for the day and I'll be in Warrington I'm guessing midday, before one o'clock at least. And we'll see how it goes from that point. Thank you. Okay, I've 
I've just picked up my second delivery from Cradley Heath. It's a single, quite heavy, but very handballable box, um, which is in my back of a van. And my trip to Warrington is just over an hour and a half. My Google Maps is not showing any orange or red on the route, so at the moment I should be dropping off quite close to half past 12. I've put in 12.45 as my ETA on CX, just to give myself a little bit of um, wiggle room if I need it. Um, I've got enough diesel to get there. I, I might be able to get home without getting it fueled up today, but I might need to, depending on where I end up, get some fuel. But right now I've got 230 odd miles left to go. And then my plan is to, uh, when I get to Warrington, have a look at what's around and and basically just take what I can, start off bidding at my usual price, that probably won't work, then go down to what I'm, I, I do a job for, but you know, it's my minimum, and then if it doesn't work, go to below my minimum because I need to get a job home or someone near home. So at the moment, optimism reigns supreme. It's been a good day so far, the weather's fine, my van's not playing up, I feel good. So this is what these days should be like. Um, I'm optimistic to have a good paying day today. I'll have to work hard for it, I know that, but I'm not, that's not a problem for me. But I have to keep trying, keep being a bit um, flexible and a bit, um, have some resilience. But I think, if I do that, I should be able to make a reasonable amount of money today. Hello, update time. So um, I dropped off my small van delivery in Warrington at 12.35. And then I just parked up around the corner and looked for another job locally. And I want to express how my experience over the next half an hour is really typical of a driver like myself nowadays. Self-employed, working off the CX, I had a very typical set of conversations or experiences. And I thought I'd just relay that to you as it's just happened. So I was in Warrington, which is a really good area for work. There's plenty of work coming out. It could be Liverpool, Manchester, even sort of Oldham, Blackburn, Bolton, Preston even, which is within reach. Going either way, you've got Northwich, um, I, I would I would go to Stockport, it's a bit further afield from where I was. You've got Runcorn, Prescott near Liverpool. There's loads of places that you can get jobs from around this area. And so I do what I usually do is, I went through the list of about 20 jobs, got rid of anything that was saying backload, got rid of anything that said delivery in the morning. That left me with about 10 immediate jobs. Now I just look through the ones that were the most ideal. So the ones that were either closest to me or going the furthest. And just put bids on. And I started doing my bids at my usual rate. So sort of a long wheelbase fan job, if it's minimum price, £60. If it's uh, going a distance, sort of £1.10, £1.20, I sort of pitched it at today. Um, if it was going to London, one thirty. Because I'll just I'll do it, but I'll do it for the full price. Uh, small van jobs, sort of looking at about 90p a mile, 95p a mile, and obviously didn't get any of those. But because there's so many jobs, within about five or ten minutes, you kind of know whether that's working or not. So I went down to my, my kind of stand standby charges of 80p a mile plus a little bit maybe for small, small van work, just over a pound a mile for long wheelbase work and did some bids there and I was more confident I'd get those, those sort of work. Um, I put a bid on a job going from Manchester to Liverpool. Um, it was it was especially a, a minimum price small van job. Uh, I put £50 on. It was about 43 miles loaded and I was about 20 minutes away so say say 15 miles away from the pickup and I got a call pretty quickly from a from a shipper that 
I get a lot of work from, from they're national, um, they do the kind of jobs that suit my van, got a call and after the first lot of pleasantries, hello how are you, that sort of thing, um, then they said could I do it for £45? And I'm just fed up of constantly being chipped from people. I put a bid on, if you don't want it, don't call me. That's, you know, that's it. And the thing is that I need to, I'm gonna start, because usually I have my phone app and I have that on. I'm gonna start going back to the CX app while I'm taking a phone call so I can actually look at the details of the job. Because you can't always remember which job you're bidding on and what you bid on and what the mileage is. And in this particular case, I might well have taken £45 because it was still at four, it was still just over a pound a mile. So actually in this particular case, it was probably not a bad offer. But I just felt at this point, I don't want to do that. I'd rather not, I'd rather not go down. And my kind of go-to, my go-to answer to that question is no, I won't reduce it, unless I'm really, really desperate. And I've only been waiting for about 20 minutes at this point, so I wasn't that desperate. So he then I said, oh, you're not, you're not going to give it to me if I get to 45. And he said he wasn't going to. It wasn't quite those words, but basically that's the, the message. And so we stopped the conversation, and I, I lost that, in fact, I just lost that job. But I just felt, that's typical, isn't it? You get, you put a bit down and you get chip, try to get chipped down. So I carried on bidding and I had quite a lot of bids on that I'd do the jobs for. And in the end, I got a job, which is, one, which is the one I'm driving to now. It's 32 minutes away, 25 dead miles. It's actually in Preston and it's going to Utoxeter. It's a small van job. The loaded miles are 81 and I'm getting 65 pounds that job and I took I, I was happy with that because I got a call about it at two minutes to one so I'd been bidding for less than half an hour after my last drop off before I got it so it's not a bad turnaround time and 65 pounds added to my other two jobs it puts me on two three five for the day and I still have plenty of time to get a, a fourth job so I've got to talk to her. So I'm kind of happy that if nothing else happens, I'm still not, it's not been a disaster. But I'm hoping to get another job. And I do know for a fact that I'm not going to get too delayed at my drop off. Because the guy that rang me put a note on the booking to explain what was happening. And also when he rang me, he explained that I was, I was going to get a phone number to call and then come and get it from me. So I feel that I'm not have to wait, but also in the the good thing about the shipper is in the notes they actually did put in if you have to wait, we'll pay you waiting time, and they put in an amount which I thought was a reasonable amount. Um, and he said that as well, if you have to wait, we will pay you waiting time. So there's no kind of anxiety about having to ask for waiting time if that does if it does turn out that way. I understand that sometimes things can go wrong, and it's no one's fault, and so having having to wait is part of the job sometimes but if, you, if you're waiting as a driver you've got to get compensated for that time in a fair way and obviously this particular guy um, understands that so I'm guessing that he's a driver as well as uh, giving out jobs I'm on my way to Preston I'm gonna be 20 minutes I'm 20 minutes away it's a small van job so again I can't I don't have to worry about um, the size, it'll fit in no matter what it is. I'm going to have a phone number to call when I get to the other end, which I'll call sort of 10 minutes before I get there. So I should, in theory, be picked up by just after half past one, and to the, but I'm guessing within an hour. So I'm guessing I'll be in Tuxedo about half past two, and uh, ready for another job. And the difficult thing is going to be getting a job from Tuxedo, because it's quite quiet there. So I need to decide, do I go up to Stoke? to go down to Birmingham or across to Derby or something, something like that or not Bert Burton um, or just stay where I am and try and, get, you know, sort of try and capture it anywhere so I'll, I'll probably stay around for a bit and then I'll um, see how it goes in terms of the number of jobs and the pricing but I don't need to get a massive job to make it a really good paying day so really if I get a, um, a £65 job again 
I'll be happy with that. That'd be a three hundred pound, three hundred pound day, and that would be not a bad result. Particularly as things have been quite difficult recently. So again, optimism level quite high at the moment. Nothing's gone wrong really. I can sort of mention, and um, I'm just trundling through my day while I was accepting my job to, to Preston. I did actually get a persistent phone call coming through after I'd answered the call and they stopped calling because I was on the phone for a while and then they rang back about two minutes later and they offered me a job that I'd bid on going from Manchester to East London and I, I had put a bid on of £220 for a long wheelbase van job. Um, the job itself was about 223 miles and that would have been a brilliant, perfect job to finish off my day. Um, but unfortunately, I had already agreed to do the other this job I'm doing now. And so, I, had to, I thanked him for the offer, but I said I had to refuse it, unfortunately. But these things sometimes happen that way. Right, I've now picked up my third small van, well, third job, it's a small van job from Preston. I'm on my way to Utoxa now. It's just another small single box, so really easy. Um, before I get to the other end, I shall ring the customer 10 minutes before and let him know I'm on my way, and then hopefully he'll be ready at the gate when I arrive. Um, so it should be quite simple. Um, slight change in ETA, it's 81 miles, so I should have worked out. It's going to be more like an hour and a half. So my ETA now is about quarter past three in Utoxeter and then I'll be looking for my last job of the day. Hopefully I'll get something. Um, but yeah, again, otherwise, all the pickup was fine. Oh yeah, a couple of little points. Um, at the pickup, the address on the parcel was different. It was a Gloucester address. Um, but I did have a reference number which I told him and we kind of worked out in the end between me and the person giving me it that although the company was right, what I was probably doing was delivering to their contractor on site rather than taking it to their the customer's office address. So he was certain that I had the right package, even though I had a different address. And I took a note on the CX booking when I picked it up saying the guy's name that gave me the parcel and the fact that um, I didn't receive any paperwork as well. That's the other thing I didn't get off him. I signed paperwork for him to keep at the collection point and the parcel on, the, on top of it got paperwork for the customer but in terms of me having paperwork for a pod for delivery I haven't got that so I just did what I usually do rang the shipper let them know that I've not got paperwork and asked them can I use the CX or do they want me to create a piece of paper and in this particular case they're happy for me just to use the CX to customers to sign on the on the app which is, I always find a lot easier to try and write out a whole proof of delivery note. So, I'm on my way, and it's Optimus levels are still there, still up there. Okay, I've dropped off my third drop at uh, Utoxeter, and I managed to put it on um, in, a, in a safe place that the person asked me to put it, leave it at when I rang them. Um, I was off-site at 25 past 3 and now I'm looking for a job that goes closer to my home. There's not an awful lot around here which I didn't think there would be. So what we're going to do is I've got 60 miles of diesel left in my vehicle so I'm going to head to the nearest fuel card petrol station which is 10 miles away and also sort of on on the way towards Derby and then I'm going to hope to on the way look for a job that's close to me within about half an hour of me um, and uh, see what happens it's going to be tough this last one um, I'm not a million miles away from home but I'd like to get one more job if I could to finish off the day and make it worth worth a while I've filled up with fuel now time it's just gone five past four there's very little jobs in this area there's the odd job coming out of Derby Nottingham Leicester in particular 
sort of all towards the east of where I am. Not a lot coming out of, um, I would hope sort of Litchfield would be close to me, or um, Utoxter itself, or Stoke, a couple of things. I had a Stoke to Utoxter one, which I need a bit of, but I thought, I'm just going to end up where I am, and I might end up waiting for longer on the return journey. So I didn't feel I wanted to go that backwards. So I made a decision now. Um, I'm going to try and hedge my bets a bit, and I'm heading east towards Derby, the junction between Derby and Burton on the A50. I'm going to hang around there, and hopefully I'll have got close to the Burton, Solicote, Derby, even Nottingham jobs um, and I'm definitely this is definitely I get this feeling every day almost it's the last job of the day syndrome my day doesn't quite pan out until I know I, until my last job my last job either makes or breaks my day so right now as I stand I've got basically an hour really of less than an hour really of searching time maybe 50 minutes I'm in a reasonable area where we'll be willing to Derby and I've got no job booked in. I've done three jobs. I'm on 235 gross, so probably more like 180, 185, 190 net after fuel. And that's not quite enough. So one more, even a little job, will make it a nice earning day. If I don't get another job, if my last job was a job to Etoxeta, then it won't have been a great day. It won't have been disaster, it would have been an okay day. So I've got this last job syndrome. It makes or breaks my day, really, to some extent. What happens next in the next few minutes? And with experience, I know it's more likely than not that I won't find a suitable job. And I'll either decide to go a long distance, let's say to London, and make the money, but it had add on about four or five hours to my day, or just go home dead, have an early day, and not quite make the money. And right now, I don't know which route I'm going to go down. I'll let you know how it goes. Right, on this occasion, on this occasion, my perseverance has sort of paid off. So, I've got another job. It is now just gone five o'clock. I had driven in total 20 mile, 21 miles away from my original third drop-off in Utoxeta and now I've got to drive another 24 miles dead to Sutton in Ashfield. It's about 45, 40 minutes, 45 minutes journey, it depends on the traffic. And I am going to end up in Lincoln, which is, which is an hour from my home, so it's not too bad at all. It will be quite a late night, but compared to just me just going home. But what I've managed to achieve is, for 38 loaded miles, 55 pounds for a small van job. So I'm actually quite pleased with that. My optimism levels were dipping quite a lot in the last hour or so. But now they've perked up a little bit. I have one slight concern and I've got one positive, so I'll start with the concern. My concern is that this job requires me to handball some 10, kilo, 10 kilogram containers onto my van and off my van into a residential home. Which I'm happy to do in theory, it's just in practice, I'm not sure if I'm physically gonna cope with that very easily. But I'm gonna park as close as I can at the pickup point and take them off the pallet and put them on my van, that should be easy. It's just a question mark is to where would the customer want me to put them when I arrive at their home? And if it involves a long distance or stairs, I am going to struggle. Um, it's a situation where the person that's receiving the goods is probably about as poorly as the person delivering the goods. <laughs> but I'm going to try and hide that from them. Well, obviously they might be a lot worse than me, so I'm, but um, in terms of their bits of carry and lift stuff, I'm probably not a lot worse, than, not a lot better than they are, to be honest. But it's money, 
and it puts me on a total today of 290 which I'm pleased with because that means I've made a reasonable amount of profit. I will have made in the region of after um, after fuel taken account something like 230 today which I think I'm, I'm pleased with that. So let's get on with this job then and um, I'll update you when I've dropped it off and how it goes. Oh yeah, the positive thing is the shipper, we had a bit of a chat about it, and he has some very specific but not onerous expectations about paperwork, uh, about you know, delivery, you know, standards. And I just thought they were, that was really good. You know, knowing where you stand, there was nothing that I wouldn't have done anyway, but it's just nice to know that the shipper cares about his customers and is wanting to provide a good customer service as well as I would like to do for him. So I've worked for them before. Um, they, I, I think they're one of the better shippers, not in terms of, not in terms of price necessarily, but in terms of just you know, being sort of um, honest and open and transparent, I suppose is the way I would describe it. Um, and that, to be fair, my money to be, to, I've got, if I was closer to Sutton, there'd be great money. I, the fact that it's quite, a long journey to get there makes it less money wise but compared to what else was available it was the best job for me I've been on a few other things but nothing was quite going you know it's all going away from my home or wasn't quite close enough or it's very cheap so I'm happy with this job I'm pleased to have got it and I noticed my last job of the day and I'm gonna end up only an hour from home when I finished job. So I should be back, I'm going to guess, 8-ish tonight. So about a 13 hour day roughly, but I'll work out where it sets out for my next video. Oh my goodness me, that was difficult. I am so tired now. So I arrived at the village location and about, I don't know, seven, five past seven-ish, can't remember. And although I was allowed by the customer to park right next to their front door, they moved their car out of the way so I could do that. I had to take the boxes upstairs into a spare bedroom. And it was very, very difficult. I walked up with him to see where to put the stuff, first of all. There were quite steep stairs, like a, it's a cottage style house, it's quite steep stairs. And I went back down and I thought, I've got 12 boxes here. I cannot physically climb these stairs up and down 12 times. So I'm going to have to try and carry two at a time, make it six trips. But obviously carrying two boxes, they were quite heavy. Now I don't know how heavy they were, but I'm going to guess they were between 15 and the two together would be between 15 and 20 kilograms. Probably more like 15, I don't know, I don't know if 20 kilograms feels like to be honest. But they were heavy, and I took the first two up, I was out of breath, halfway up the stairs, sat down, had a quick rest, came back down, took the second set two up. I was heavily breathing all throughout this period, struggled with the stairs the second time. Back was beginning to hurt at this point, and I just thought, "Well, keep going." I had to. I have to be honest and say, I didn't want him to know that I was struggling, but you couldn't hide it. I was breathing heavily, but he was sort of in and out of his house, in his, his living room, should I say, and not leaving me to it. So I was pleased about. But I was trying to sort of not take too long. I didn't want him to sort of start asking me, are you okay? Because that would have been quite embarrassing. But also I was struggling physically to do it. 
So I took the third set and I was really so tired after the third trip. And I thought, at least I'm halfway now, but how am I going to do three more? I was breathing really heavily at this point. My back was hurting quite a lot. Went back down. Um, I'd given him my paperwork to sign while I did this, and he came back out and, and showed me the paperwork he'd signed, so I took that off him. Thanks for that. And it was about the second trip up that I realised what I was doing. I was taking up boxes of fluid, dialysis fluid, for perineatal, I think you say, say it, perineatal dialysis. And I thought, this is ironic, isn't it? Tomorrow, I'm going in for hemodialysis, and I'm, today, I'm carrying boxes of stuff up for him to his home version of that. But I've also got a stenosis in my spine, which is making my back hurt do this. So probably, probably literally, he's probably more able to carry stuff than I am. But I couldn't tell him that. Because that's what I'm, you know, I'm, doing, I'm here doing a job. I'm being paid to do this. It's not for me to tell the customers my concerns about my health. You know, I chose to do this job as in this particular job, you know, and at the end of the day, it got me, it got me most of the way home, and it got me, got me a, a bit of money, but I was thinking about this point, was it worth it? So I just saw, saw it on, I had a bit of a rest, so on that, there's a bed in the, bed in the spare room, sat in the bed for a bit, bed downstairs, took the fourth one up, and then he, his, his wife came out to say, uh, tea's ready, come back in to his husband. And he said, oh, we can't come in yet because I've got to bring my car back and wait for this guy to finish. So obviously I was taking longer than maybe they were thinking. So I just carried on. I was upstairs, fourth, oh, also on the stairs, I was grunting. Every step was, uh, uh, uh. I reckon they probably heard it. I reckon they heard me because there's no way I could have done it without grunting. It was really a painful experience. So fifth, fifth time, my back was really hurting. I just about made it up to the top step, collapsed on the bed, heavy breathing, and just, I was up for about 20 seconds, get my breath back, and went back downstairs and did the last two. I just was, just so, I, I was trying to, I almost put them down, I almost had to stop, put them down at the top of the stairs, but I thought I can't do that. Just keep walking, keep walking, keep walking. And I sort of fell onto the, the pile I created and left them on top. Uh, like, 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 I didn't really place them on. I did place them on, like I fell on and put them on. Not, not, as, not as a fall, as in I've lost balance, but as in a, I'm exhausted and just collapsed these two art boxes back on top of this pile, which is down at the height, height of my shoulders. So, I sat there, took a picture, went back downstairs and then got myself off site as soon as I could. And it's 25 past seven when I finished. And then the trip home, which I'm doing now, is 50 minutes. It's about 33 miles, so it's not that big a deal. I'll be home for sort of quarter past eight. But that job was a killer. And I'll have to, I'll have to consider... I don't want to not do that job, like a job like that, but I, I'm not sure I can do it anymore. And also, I was thinking about this when I, when I do this video. When my partner hears me describe this, they're going to go really ape at me, crazy at me for for doing that. Because she tells me not to carry too much heavy, heavy stuff. But you know, there's a. We've got to make. I've got to make money somehow. You know, beggars can't be choosers. This was a very unpleasant job, but I, I felt I had to do it. But, you know, now that I've got this memory, when I do it next time, I will sit, I'll think twice if I do it next time. But I may still do it. The thing is, when you get a job like this, you don't know that there's going to be stairs involved. You know, in this particular case, there were stairs, but maybe another house that have a, you know, a garage or something, or, uh, you know, I, could, I couldn't use my sack barrow. For the stairs, 
I was close enough to the house to not. I was like two steps into the front door, one more step, and then I was on the stairs. So it was pointless to have a sack barrow. But if I was in another situation where a sack barrow could be used, I could use that and be a lot easier. So it's not like all jobs like this I could never do, but this particular one was. I was in my head. I was swearing a lot, and I was grunting on the stairs a lot. Anyway, let's move on. So I have got some stats for today. And I'll bring this video to a close with the stats. So I have filled up with fuel today again, so it's Monday. So I've got an, I would say I've got a new average fuel price, but it's exactly the same. Today's average today's fuel price is 13.68 pence per mile. And last week I had two fill-ups and they between them averaged exactly the same, 13.68 pence per mile. That's quite interesting. Today I've driven 431 miles, 431. I will have worked for 13 and a half hours by the time I get home. I have managed to earn from four CX jobs, 290 pounds, 290. So that's the good news. I've spent 58 pounds and 96 pence on fuel, so basically £59, which means my net earnings after fuel today are £231, which I'm happy with, but I feel I've earned it. Mm. Oh dear. Right, so, thank you for watching listening to my video. I hope that you are being successful. However you choose to find that word for yourselves, and I'll see you probably next on Friday. I'm not planning to work on Wednesday. I'm going to be going to visit my daughter and her boyfriend on tomorrow evening, and we're going to stay up and try and watch the American election results as they come in. So that'll be a good bonding exercise for me and her boyfriend. So that's what I'm doing it for. It's worth being interested in the, in the results as well. Okay, farewell friends. Right, okay, so we are travelling at 22 miles an hour at the moment behind this Nolan lorry. I don't know what's going on, there's nothing in front of it. It keeps doing some weird manoeuvres where it sort of goes to the right of the road and then comes back across and it breaks every so often. I don't have a clue what's going on. None of us can overtake it. Look, it's breaking now for no reason. Is it indicating left? Alright, oh, that was crazy. That was really crazy.